Hello. Um, so I've got some um, scripture today, lots of scripture today, not really a base scripture, just like a base mood kind of thing that, you know, the Lord has established his kingdom. He already reigns, he, you know, it's already finished. Um, and that gives us a reason to rejoice and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And so that's my prayer. Oh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for another opportunity to be able to share your word and and to just speak about you and your holiness and your righteousness and your kingdom and how you reign supreme over all. And I just, I adore you. You put, you put the, the one who put up the heavenly lights is the one that deeply and intimately cares about each and every one of his creature, cre creatures that he created on this earth. Lord, Heavenly Father, may your name always be kept holy. Thy will be done and thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, Heavenly Father, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us, Lord, our trespasses. Lord, help us to forgive others their trespasses as you forgive us ours against you and against others, Lord. Teach us how, Father God. We can't do it without you. Father God, I just thank you. I thank you for that gift. Lord, don't let us be led into temptation. And deliver us from all evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. In the mighty name of Lord Yeshua, I pray. Hallelujah. Okay, so I start. I'm gonna start off with Psalm um, chapter one hundred three and verse nineteen. Let's see, Spirit. Actually, I'm gonna read the whole thing because it's it's just good. It's our forgiving God because He is. He's so forgiving and He's so patient. Um, it takes a long time for his nose to get hot and <laughs> turn red inside us. So praise the Lord for that. It's a, it's the Hebrew um, translation of the word for long suffering, which I, I I still don't recall it, but it means long of nose, Hebrew, long of nose. Psalm 103, the forgiving God. My soul praise Yahweh, and all that is within me praise his holy name. My soul praise the Lord, and do not forget all his benefits. He forgives all your sin. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with faithful love and compassion. He satisfies you. He satisfies you with goodness. Your youth is renewed like an eagle. The Lord executes acts of righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He revealed his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and rich in faithful love. He will not always accuse us or be angry forever. He has not dealt with us as our sins de deserve or repaid us according to our offenses. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love towards those who fear him. As far as the, the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Hallelujah and amen. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. He knows what we are made of, remembering that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He blooms like a flower of the field. When the wind passes over it, it vanishes, and its place is no longer known. But from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is towards those who fear him and his righteousness, toward the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant. For remember to observe his precepts, it says to the thousandth generation. The Lord, this is the key verse that, um, or, you know, one of the key verses. This is verse 19 of 103. Um, the Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. 
was nothing out. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, all his angels of great strength who do his word, obedient to his command. Praise the Lord, all his armies, his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works in all the places where he rules. My soul praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. And amen. Um, I actually kind of want to read Psalm 104 too. God the Creator. My soul praise Yahweh. Lord my God, you are so very great. <laughs> you are clothed with majesty and splendor. He wraps himself in light as if it were a robe. I love that God. <laughs> Laying the beams of his palace on the waters above, making the clouds his chariot, walking on the wings of the wind and making the winds his messengers or angels. Oh, I love that. Flames of fire, his servants. Hallelujah and amen. He established the earth on its foundations. It will never be shaken. You covered it with the deep as if it were a garment. The water stood, but the mountains. At your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the place you established for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. They will never cross the earth again. Hallelujah. <laughs> He causes the springs to gush into the valleys. They flow between the mountains. They supply water for every wild beast. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. I don't know why that got me excited. The birds of the sky live beside the springs. They sing among the foliage. He waters the mountains from his palace. The earth is satisfied by the fruit of your labor. He causes grass to grow for the livestock. He provides crops for a man to cultivate producing food from the earth, wine that makes man's heart glad, making his face shine with oil and bread that sustains man's heart. Hallelujah and amen. Bread of life. <laughs> the trees of the Lord flourish, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork, the stork makes its home in the pine trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The cliffs are a refuge for the hyraxes. He made the moon to mark the festivals. The sun knows when to set. You bring darkness and it becomes night. When all the forest animals stir, the young lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises, they go back and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until evening. How countless are your works, Lord. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. How, here is the sea, vast and wide, teeming with creatures, beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships move about, and Leviathan, which you formed to play there. That's so good. You guys, all of them wait for you. To give them food at the right time when you give it to them they gather it when you open your hand they are satisfied in, with good things when you hide your face they are terrified when you take away their breath they die and return to the dust when you send your breath they are created hallelujah and amen and you renew the face of the earth hallelujah and amen May the glory of the Lord endure forever. Hallelujah and amen. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they pour out smoke. Hallelujah and amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and so um, I, I got quite a few scriptures. Um, just kind of. I was about to say establishing his throne, but it's already been done. So basically just showing with the scripture why we have so many reasons to rejoice and to praise the Lord. Um, this one's a really short one. This Psalm 11, it was verse 4, is the one that I was, I had picked out. Um, oh, Holy Spirit did. I've taken refuge in the Lord. How can you say to me, escape to the mountains like a bird? <laughs> for the wick, for look, the wicked string the bow. They put the arrow on the bowstring to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. 
The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes watch. He examines everyone. The Lord examines the righteous and the wicked. He hates the lover of violence. He will rain burning coals and sulfur on the wicked. A scorching wind will be their portion. Where it says, be the portion of their cup. Oh, for the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright will see his face. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks be to God. Um, for the, you know, the reason to praise, you know, I have, I've already started that is, you know, that, God, that is God has raised us up with the Messiah Yeshua and seated us with him in heaven in order to exhibit in the ages to come, that's now, how great is his kindness towards us who are united with the Messiah Yeshua. Hallelujah and amen. Um, that was, uh, that's in Ephesians 2, um, 6 through 8. <clears throat> James, um, verse one, or I mean, chapter one, verses 16 and 17, it says, don't delude yourselves, my dear brothers, familia, every good act of giving and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father who made the heavenly lights. Hallelujah. <laughs> With him, there is neither variation nor darkness caused by turning. Hallelujah. Psalm um, 9, so just a little a chapters over from the other psalm we were just in. Um, I got it because it's, it's titled Celebration of God's Justice, and we should. This is the reason to celebrate. I will thank Yahweh with all my heart. I will declare all your wonderful works. I will rejoice and boast about you. I will sing about your name, Most High. When my enemies retreat, they stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my just cause. You are seated on your throne as a righteous judge. You have rebuked the nations. <clears throat> you have destroyed the wicked. You have erased their name forever and ever. The enemy has come to eternal ruin. You have uprooted the cities, and the very memory of them has perished. Hallelujah and amen. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He judges the world with righteousness. He executes judgment on the nations with fairness. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Hallelujah and amen. He is. Those who know your name trust in you because you have not abandoned those who seek you, Yahweh. Sing to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim his deeds among the nations. We dwell in Zion. For the one who seeks an account, accounting for the bloodshed, remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Hallelujah. Be gracious to me, Lord. Consider my affliction at the hands of those who hate me. Lift me up from the gates of death so that I may declare all your praises. I will rejoice in your salvation within the gates of daughter Zion. The nations have fallen into the pit they made. Their foot is caught in the net they have concealed. The Lord has revealed himself. He has executed justice. <clears throat> Striking down the wicked by the work of their hands. The wicked will return to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the oppressed will not always be forgotten. The hope of the afflicted will not perish forever. Rise up, Lord. Do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Put terror in them, Lord. Let the nations know they are only men. Salah. I guess that's it. That's so time. Um, I also have... Uh, scripture in Exodus and Lamentations, or in Exodus first, chapter 15, um, verse 18 is the um, <clears throat> scripture that I picked out. Exodus 15, Holy Spirit picked it out, helped me, led me to. <laughs> Where to get it right? Holy Spirit, help me. Um, Exodus 15, 18. It says, actually, I'm going to see. I'm going to start at 14, or no, 13. You will lead the people you have redeemed with your faithful love. You will guide them to your holy dwelling with your strength. When the people hear, they will shudder. Anguish will seize the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom will be terrified. Trembling will seize the leaders of Moab. 
The inhabitants of Canaan will panic, and terror and dread will fall on them. They will be as still as stone because of your powerful arm until your people pass by, Lord, until the people whom you purchased pass by. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your possession. Lord, you have prepared the place for your dwelling. Lord, your hands have established the sanctuary. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with their tambourines and danced. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. He has thrown the horse and its rider into the sea. And now it goes on to say, you know, water was provided. It says, Then Moses led Israel on from the Red Sea, and they went out to the wilderness ashore. They journeyed for three days in the wilderness without finding water. They came to Marah, but they could not drink the water at Marah because it was bitter. That is why it was named Marab, or bitter or bitterness. The people grumbled to Moses, what are we going to drink? <laughs> so, that, so he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he threw it into the water, the water became drinkable. He says, hey, hey, hey go grab that stick. I love it. I love our God. <clears throat> um... Also has Lamentations, uh, chapter five, verse nineteen. Mm -hmm. I love this word. It's so good. Five, nineteen. Yes. I'm going to go with verse 9. We secure our food at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. Our skin is as hot and black as an oven from the ravages of hunger. Women are raped in Zion. Girls in the cities of Judah. Princes are hung up with their hands. Elders are shown no respect. Young men labor at millstones. Boys stumble under loads of wood. The elders have left the city gate. The young men, their music... Joy has left their hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The crown has fallen from her head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Because of this, our heart is sick. Because of these, our eyes grow dim. Because of Mount Zion, which lies desolate. And there's jackals prowling in it. You, Lord, are enthroned forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. Hallelujah and amen. Why have you forgotten us forever? Abandon us for our entire lives. Lord, restore us to yourself so we may return. Renew our days as in former times, unless you have completely rejected us and are intensely angry with us. Wow. Holy Father, thy will be done. Um, hallelujah and amen. Um, Daniel 4, um, verse 3. One. This is the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, just before it. <clears throat> I'm going to start the first one because it's just a few lines. It says, um, to do King Nebuchadnezzar, to those of every people, nation, and language who live in all the earth. How appropriate. Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Let it be so, Father God, your will be done. May your prosperity increase. I am pleased to tell you about the miracles and wonders of the, the Most High God has done for me. Amen. How great are his miracles and how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Hallelujah and amen. Um, back to the New Testament, Revelations uh, chapter 11, verse 15. As the seventh angel blew his trumpet, then there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. I love it. i got to say it again. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. 
So then the twelve, the twenty-four elders who were seated before God on their thrones fell face down and worshipped God, saying, We thank you, Lord God, the Almighty, who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, but your wrath has come. The time has come for the dead to be judged and to give the reward to your servants, the prophets, to the saints, and to those who fear your name, both small and great. Hallelujah and amen. I love it. He includes everybody. And the time has come to destroy those who destroy the earth. God's sanctuary in heaven was opened and the Ark of His Covenant appeared in His sanctuary. There are flashes of lightning, rumblings of thunder, and earthquake and severe hail. And then it goes into, you know, the woman, the dragon, the child and the dragon. I kind of want to read it because, um, you know, it talks about us, you know, the people in the heavens that were to rejoice. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and read it because, um, those are the other scriptures that I have, uh, besides these ones. Um, so it's Revelation 12, a great sign or symbolic display. It's also in, uh, on, in verse three as well. Appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in labor and agony as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven. There's a great fiery red dragon having, se having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems. <clears throat> another symbolic display, or no, or crowns rather. Sorry. His tail swept away a third of the stars in heaven and hurled them to the earth. <clears throat> It was a third of the angels that fell with him. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that when she did give birth, he might devour her child. But she gave birth to a son, a male who was going to shepherd all nations with an iron scepter. And her child was caught up to God into his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God to be fed there for 1,260 days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels also fought, but he could not prevail. And there was no place for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was thrown out, that ancient serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, the one who deceives the whole world. He was thrown to earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah has now come conquered and done on the cross hallelujah and amen because the accuser of our brothers has been thrown out the one who accuses them before our god day and night they conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony our testimony is what's part of it yes the blood is sufficient but we have to know why <laughs> we have to have reasons like i can't even I can't even begin to tell you what he's doing for me I could, I could talk for a thousand years and I don't think I could cover it all just in this last year and a half alone. Glory be to God. It says they conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not love their lives in the face of death. Hallelujah, Lord. Help us. Help us all not to love our lives more than you or than anything, really. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, where we're seated. Hallelujah. And you who dwell in them. Hallelujah, that's us. Woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great fury, because he knows he has a short time. When the dragon saw that he had been thrown to earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. The woman who was given two wings of a great eagle so that she could fly from the serpent's presence to her place in the wilderness where she was fed for a time, times and a half a time. From his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river, flowing after the women to, woman to sweep her away in a torrent. But the earth helped the woman. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the river that the dragon had spewed from his mouth. So that dragon was furious with the woman and left to wage war against the rest of her offspring, her seed. Those who keep God's commands and have the testimony about Jesus. He stood on the sand of the sea. Or see this. It's another it's a lot of other translation. He is apparently referenced to the dragon. The dragon, I guess, is the only note. Or it just gives other cross scripture reference. Revelations 12, 18, 12, 17, and 13, the one which is right here. So I'll just read it. 
and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads. On his horns were ten diadems, and on his head was bla were blasphemous names. And it goes on. Um, I want to talk about God's kingdom here. So, um, Revelation 15, 3 is another one that was led. 15, 3, preparation for the bowl, judgments. And it's going to start at the beginning. Then I saw another great and awe-inspiring sign in the heavens. Seven angels with the seven last plagues. For with them, God's wrath will, wrath will be completed. I also saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire. And those who had won the victory over the beast, his image, and the number of his name were standing on the sea of glass. With harps from God. <laughs> oh, you, Father God, you're so beautiful. I'm sorry, I gotta read this again. I also saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had won the victory over the beast, his image, and the number of his name, were standing on the sea of glass with harps from God. They sang the song of God's servant Moses and the song of the Lamb. Great and awe inspiring are your works, Lord God the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name because you alone are holy? For all the nations will come and worship before you because your righteous acts have been revealed. After this, I looked in the heavenly sanctuary. The tabernacle of testimony was opened. Out of the sanctuary came the seven angels with the seven plagues, dressed in clean, bright linen and gold sashes wrapped around their chests. One of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven gold bowls filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And then the sanctuary was filled with smoke from God's glory and his power, and no one could enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. I kind of want to keep reading, but I don't know. I think he's wanting me to. I'm just going to go ahead. Then I heard a loud voice from the sanctuary saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first went and poured out his bowl on the earth and severe and severely painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The second poured out his bowl into the sea, and it turned to blood like a dead man's, and all life in the sea died. The third poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. I heard the angels of the water say, You are righteous, who is and who was. The Holy One, for you have decided these things because they poured out the blood of the saints and the prophets. You also gave them blood to drink. They deserve it. Then I heard someone from the altar say, Yes, Lord God, the Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Hallelujah and amen. The fourth poured out his bowl on the sun. He was given power to burn people with fire and people were burned by the intense heat. So they blasphemed the name of God who had the power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. A fifth poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues because of their pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, yet they did not repent of their actions. Six poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, great river Euphrates <laughs> for its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming from the dragon's mouth, from the beast's mouth, and from the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of demons performing signs who travel to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for the battle of the great day of God, the Almighty. Look, I am coming like a thief, the one who is alert and remains clothed, or guards his clothes, like what Jesus has clothed you in in righteousness and truth and love and faith and camps around you in his faithful love hallelujah and amen thank you yahweh thank you lord yahweh thank you lord yeshua thank you holy spirit the one who is alert and remains closed so that he may not go around naked and people see his shame is blessed so they assembled them at the place called in hebrew armageddon or let's see harmageddon harmageddon armageddon and there's Magadon, just different Hebrew spellings and translations. And the seventh poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the sanctuary from the throne, saying, It is done. Ah, 
that's Jesus. Hallelujah. There are flashes of lightning and rumbles of thunder and a severe earthquake occurred like no other since man has been on earth. So great was the quake. So great that soldier was like, this truly was the son of God. Wow. Oh, sorry. Well, the great city split into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. Babylon the Great has remembered in God's presence. He gave her the cup filled with the wine of his fierce anger. Every island fled and the mountains disappeared. Enormous hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell from the sky on people. And they blasphemed God for the plagues of hail because that plague was extremely severe. Um, in First Timothy chapter one, talking about him reigning, he reigns, always has and was. It's, it's never changed. Thank God we get the help of the Holy Spirit to, to help us. Um, First Timothy one seventeen. Actually, I'm going to go with verse 12. I give thanks to the Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, me too, because he considered me faithful, appointing me to the ministry. One who, formerly a blasphemer, same. A persecutor, same. And an arrogant man, an arrogant woman. Father God, yeah, I admit it before you and your people. I definitely was also those things, but I received mercy because I acted out of ignorance and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Thank you, Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them. Yep. But I received mercy for this reason, so that in me, the worst of them, yep, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience. <sighs> Long of nose. As an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. The only God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And it just says engage in battle. It says, Timothy, my son, I am giving you this instruction in keeping with the pro prophecies previously made about you. So that by them you may strongly engage in battle, having faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these and have suffered the shipwreck of their faith. Hymenaeus and Alexander are among them, and I have delivered them to Satan so that they may be taught not to blaspheme. And it goes into instructions for prayer, which I'm going to read because it's my favorite. It's like, I think it is. It's one of my favorite scriptures because it's just, it just envelops our, his true character in so many ways. I mean, not that the whole Bible doesn't do that. That's his, it's a love letter to us, but it says, first of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, Christ Jesus himself, human, who gave himself a ransom for all testimony at the proper time for this i was appointed a herald an apostle i am telling the truth i am not lying and a teacher of the gentiles in faith and in truth it can only help to to be there <laughs> i believe uh, you know he's definitely leading me but i don't know i think i just preach i think i just talk about how much i love him and speak about his word and what he reveals to me um so that way to help you because I really I just I understand it's hard to believe um, yeah I do I'm going to start at verse 8 uh, it's First Peter <clears throat> chapter 5 verse 8 be in verse 11 is the uh, verse though be serious be alert your adversary the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour Resist him and be firm in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. Now the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will personally restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little. The dominion belongs to him forever. Amen.
I love this. It says, I have written you this brief letter through Sylvanius. I know him to be a faithful brother to encourage you and to testify that this is the true grace of God. Take your stand in it, Familia. Take your stand in it. The church in Babylon, also chosen, sends you greetings, as does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Shalom to all who are in Christ. Hallelujah and amen. Um, in 1 Corinthians 15, um, it talks about everything going being under his feet. It's, you know, all the things that are going to happen until everything's under his feet. Um, that's in 1 Corinthians 15. And verse 25. We start at verse 1, verse 20. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as a man, as in Adam, all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward, as, as at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end. Then he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, when he abolishes all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be abolished is death. For God has put everything under his feet. But when it says everything is put under him, it is obvious that he who puts everything under him is the exception. And when everything is subject to Christ, then the Son himself will also be subject to the one who subjected everything to him. So that God may be all in all. Hallelujah and amen. Oh, Lord. In Hebrews um, chapter 1, I'm going to make a firm, solid foundation on God is, <laughs> he reigns, and, you know, nothing is um, accident. It's all very purposeful by a very skilled master beyond anything I could describe or really truly imagine. Hebrews 1, thank you, Yahweh, verse 8. Um, so I'm going to start at verse 5. Actually, no, we'll just go to the nature of the Son at the beginning. Long ago, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets at different times and in different ways. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. God has appointed him heir to, of, of all things and made the universe through him. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He became higher in rank than the angels, just as the name he inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son? Today I become your father, or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. When he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, and all God's angels must worship him. And about the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants a fiery flame. But to the sun, your throne, God is forever and ever in the scepter of your kingdom. It is a scepter of justice. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. This is why God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy rather than your companions. In the beginning, Lord, you established the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will, you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. You will roll them up like a cloak and they will be changed like a robe. But you are the same and your years will never end. Hallelujah. Now to what did the angels see ever to the angels? Has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool or your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve those who are going to inherit salvation? <clears throat> it says, we must therefore pay even more attention to what we have heard so that we will not drift away. For if the measure spoken through, or message spoken through angels was legally binding and eat, <clears throat> excuse me, and every transgression and disobedience received a just punishment, how will we escape if we neglect such a great salvation it was first spoken by the lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him hallelujah and amen at the same time god all god also testified by signs and wonders 
various miracles and distributions of gifts from the Holy Spirit according to his will. Um, Hebrews 2 is a good chapter, if you guys want to read it. It's a good chapter. Um, I also have, you know, the humility plus repentance is where the true joy comes in. And so I have um, some really good scripture, but I also have some um, Hebrew and some Greek words for you to kind of help get some better understanding. Um, repentance, there's, you know, it's not really, that's not, that's just the word that we have, but it's uh, teshuva, to return in, or shuv um, in Hebrew. And it just means a practical turn from evil and turning toward good. Um, metatonia or metanoia, that's the Greek word, change your thinking, perspective, going beyond your thinking. Um, the ham is regret. It's like a kind of like it goes along with shuv, um, taking a deep breath or even sign as a way of expressing regret or feeling compassion in, re in response to an offense by others. So it's either like, ah, Lord, you know, that's me, you know, or like, a, ah, Lord, you know, like when it's for somebody else, you know, like it's annoyed when it's me, it's like compassion <laughs> when it's other people. But I love how, I love how it gave a ham. That's like one of going to be, hopefully one of my favorite words, Holy Spirit help, because it's, it's both. I love how it, it can express annoyance at yourself and regret in yourself. Like, oh my gosh, come on. Like, what's wrong with it, you know? But then, you know, you can also use it in like a, you know, a side because there was, you know, for me, I kind of felt like I, I would always have to be like, God, I know you know my heart, but I, that wasn't a sigh and like a, like an annoyed sigh, you know, but he gave me with permission, and he's giving you permission to do that, you know, um, but with, you know, it's a right spirit, because we all, we all fall short of the grace of God, every single one of us, um, one of the examples that, um, in, in regards to the use of the word Lucham is Genesis 6, 6, and this is what it says, the Lord regretted that he had made man on earth. And he was grieved in his heart. It hurts his heart. You know, um, and humility is an accurate, est um, sorry, it's an accurate estimation of ourselves before God and man. It's the recognition of being unworthy to receive God's grace and um, mercy. Like we're, we're unworthy of it, but he's compassionate and loving and just wants to pour it out on us. We just have to be humble and, and accept that we need a Savior and we cannot not sin all by ourselves. Um, that's acknowledgement of confessing a sin as well as a submission to the Word of God and God's, sovereign's, God's sovereign plans and God-given authority. Humility laws... Oh, I see it. Maybe humility lays down any perceived rights. Yes, that's exactly what it is. I just didn't finish that statement. It says lays down any perceived rights, plans, and desires. So, you know, what we are thinking, you know, he says his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. And so we have to just lay it down. You know, um, anything that is perceived that's a right of ours, um, our plans, you know, that we have and our desires that you know, we have to lay him down and, and recognize that, yes, he wants to give us the things of our heart, but not if that's not what's best for us because he cares about us. Um, humility in the heart says things such as, I am unworthy to receive God's grace. I will submit my will to God's word and obey through um, enabling grace. I acknowledge my sin before God and others. I do. I acknowledge my sin before God and before you guys. Um, Proverbs 11, 2, it says, first, come, first comes pride, then disgrace. But walk, but with humble, the, with the humble is wisdom. I am sorry, guys, but with the humble is wisdom. In Isaiah 
chapter 57, 15, it says, For thus says the high exalted one who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in the high and holy place, but also with the broken and humble. So he's high and mighty, but he's down here with us. He was born in a manger, a feeding trough. <laughs> he's as humble as he gets. That's why he says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He's humble and he's gentle. In order to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the hearts of the broken ones. I'm going to read that again because it's beautiful. It says, I live in the high and holy place, but also with the broken and humble. In order to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the broken ones. In Micah chapter 6, verse 8, it says, Human being, you have already been told what is good, what Adonai demands of you, no more than to act justly, love grace, and walk in purity of your God, with your God. In Philippians 2, 5 through 8, um, I wrote down just verse 6. I'm going to go to that, though. Um, but though he was in the form of God, he did not re regard equality with God, something to be possessed by force. I love that translation. I felt like it, you know, when I read that, I was just like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that makes way more sense because, you know, yes, used to his advantage, but we also are very much guilty of trying to take things, you know, or claim things of God that aren't rightfully ours. You know, um, he bestows blessings on his children, but you know, if it's not all gravy, you're light. That doesn't mean he's punishing me. You know, it's, it's, it could be discipline, but, you know, he, he, he disciplines the children he loves. And so, I'm um, in Philippians chapter 2, though, I am going to read that. Chapter 2. It says, make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of men, just like us. And when he had come as a man in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. <clears throat> and we do too. We have to die to self. It says, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and will give him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Um, and here's joy. So, humility plus repentance equals joy. Simcha. I love it. Simcha. Simcha. No, I can't say it, but it's one of the most common words in the Bible. Um, it's merry, delight, rejoicing, pleasure, or gladness. It says, um, joy is a gladness of heart produced by the Holy Spirit. So we can't just, you know, like I, I can't make myself like this. <laughs> what do you mean, you guys? I can't. Um, you can ask my family. Uh, joy permeates our disposition despite trial, heartache, or pain. That is, that's me. That's, that's why I wrote that down. Cause it's just like, it just permeates through all the pain and all the things that I experience. It is an attitude of spirit that is fixed upon eternal glories and heavenly blessing, heavenly blessings. So the sorrows of earth do not cause our soul to despair. A joyful heart is a thankful heart. Contrary to joy or despair, anxiety, anger, and envy, joy in the heart says such things as, I will rejoice when others receive good. I will remember all God's goodness on my behalf. I am content with God's sovereign gifts. Hallelujah and amen. In Nehemiah, Nehemiah uh, 8.10, it says, Then he said to them, Go, eat rich food drink sweet drinks and send portions to those who can't provide for themselves. So take care of the poor and the needy for today is consecrated to the Lord. Don't be sad for the joy of Adonai is your strength. It is, it is your strength. Hallelujah and amen. Philippians 4, 4. That was the, you know, we were just in Philippians 2. I guess I could read it, but I like, um, I like the Jewish translations too. Although it's used a lot, sometimes it's similar. I mean, it's always similar, but I mean the wordings. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. It says always. Romans 12, 12, rejoice in your hope. Be patient in your troubles. And continue steadfastly in prayer. Because he reigns. He reigns. You know, that's why he is a command not to worry. And what a beautiful God to give us that command. Um, I don't know. I just think that's beautiful. And so I'm actually going to start at the beginning because it's beautiful. And that's a good place to end. So then, my brothers, you were dearly loved. Me, familia, you were dearly loved and longed for. My joy and my crown. I don't know, I don't know if you're my crown, but you're definitely my joy. <laughs> um, in this manner, stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I urge Yoda, Yodia, and I urge Sintink, I don't know her name, to agree in the Lord. I can't wait to meet her. Yes, I also ask you, true partner, to help these women who have contended for the gospel at my side, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything. But in everything, through prayer and petition and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the shalom of God, which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's true. Hallelujah and amen. It's true. It says, finally, brothers, familia, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence and if there is any praise, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of Shalom will be with you. It says, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that once again, I have a cat hair or something, <laughs> um, <clears throat> greatly that you renewed your care for me. You were, in fact, concerned about me, but lacked the opportunity to show it. I don't say that out of need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. Hallelujah and amen. Thank you, God. Finally, <laughs> I know both how to have a little, and I know how to have a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need. I'm able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Still, you did well by sharing with me in my hardship. Hardship, And you Philippians know that in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church spared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent gifts for my needs several times. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that is increasing to your account. But I have received everything in full. And I have an abundance. Hallelujah and amen. I am fully supplied, having received from Epaphroditus, which he provided. I get it from God, but um, a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah and amen. I love you, Familia. And he loves you even more. And I just, glory be to God, hallelujah. May God bless you and keep you. May he look down and make his face shine upon you and be gracious towards you. In Jesus' name. Bye. God bless you guys. Hallelujah and amen.